Hello everyone, my name is Chrissy and welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing a book review of The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. Now this is a contemporary romance novel which follows the characters Lena and Max. Now in the beginning of the book, in the prologue, Lena gets stood up at the altar by Max's brother Andrew. Now Andrew in the morning sends off a text message to his brother Max saying, Hey, last night, thanks so much for uh, convincing me not to get married. <laughs> And then he asks his brother, hey, by the way, could you be the one to tell Lena because you are such a good salesperson. Max doesn't really want to do that, but he also knows that if he doesn't tell Lena what's going on, then she's just going to be at the altar wondering what's up. So he goes down and tells Lena that Andrew's not coming to the wedding, that he called it off. Lena, understandably, is very perturbed and she ends up like really focusing on that Max uh, is the one to tell her and also that the text message reads that Max convinced Andrew. So she's like sights on Max like you jerky jerk 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 sin to sin. So fast forward um, I forget whether it's months or years but fast forward a good chunk of time and Lena is doing her best at being a wedding planner and she's very very good at it. She she does very well, she's very organized, and she manages to keep calm in kind of the most insane circumstances. Well, she ends up getting kind of pitched a job interview by this gal who runs a hotel. The offer is that if Lena does well and does a presentation with this advertising agency, she can be the wedding coordinator of this hotel chain, and that would bring in a very stable income for Lena, and she could be like, set, as far as careers go. The advertising agency happens to be uh, the agency where Max and Andrew work. So Lena ends up being teamed up with Max to get together a presentation of what a wedding thingamajig at a hotel would look like. I don't know. I know very little in regards to that area of um, business. That is the concept of the story Lena and Max end up falling in love during this whole process. Now this book is touted as an enemies to lovers uh, romance, or at least I thought it was um, in kind of the list that I saw it in and uh, in some of the reviews that I read for it. I wouldn't necessarily call this an enemies to lovers. Certainly Lena doesn't like Max, but Max likes Lena just fine. He actually, for the most part, is very empathetic and sympathetic to what she went through, and he doesn't hate her at all. So I wouldn't really put this as an enemies to lovers as as far as, as, far as that classic kind of trope goes. Um, I would just put it as one person really, really doesn't like the other one, and the other one kind of likes the other person. I don't know. Things I like about this book, the main character is a woman of color and she's also very ambitious in her career goals. She wants to make being a wedding planner work and she wants to, you know, um, be successful at it. She's uh, Brazilian American, so she's Latina. And I love that this book has both English and Portuguese in it. Now, if you're concerned with another language being put in the book, because what if you don't understand what's being said? I wouldn't worry about that too much with The Worst Best Man, primarily because the author does a really good job of using context and also like doing a brief explanation of the conversations uh, without going into like word for word verbatim, which I actually prefer in my novels that have uh, multiple languages in them. And this book does celebrate Lena's culture as well. So I, I love that aspect of this book. Now, as far as Max goes, I did like that he does have ambition too. And his ambition does run into a kind of competition with Andrew. And when I mean kind of, it, it definitely is competition between those two. But Max is trying to um, lean away from that. He's trying not to get into so much competition with Andrew and instead just be his own person, which I really liked as far as growth of a character goes. There was a nice contrast between family dynamics of Lena and her family and Max and his family. Max um, and his family is uh, a little, I, I don't know if it's stereotypical, but it's stereotypical of a Caucasian family of like the parent is a little bit distant from their children and you know Max is trying to gain approval from his parent even if he's trying to like tell himself that he doesn't need that parent's approval. So there's that and then there's Lena and her family which are very close and um, a bit more extended. So she has her cousins and her aunts um, and then her mother as well. 
and they're very close and they're very supportive of Lena and her career choices. So I did like the contrast in regards to the family dynamics that happened in this book. Another thing that I liked about this book is that even though it's a romantic comedy, it's not afraid to hit a little bit on deeper issues. For example, one of the um, conflicts that Lena ends up having throughout this book is that she's a very uh, emotional person. Like, I too am a very emotional person. I cry at the drop of a hat. For, for real. Um, and Lena, when she feels really strong emotions, she show showcases that. For example, one of the stories that comes out is that Lena had this ex-boyfriend who uh, ended up just doing her wrong and she shows great emotion, wailing and, you know, pouring her heart out there. And Lena hits upon this um, when she talks about it with Max, but women and especially women of color kind of get side-eyed when we show too much emotion. Like it's, oh, she's being hysterical. When really it's a pretty understandable reason why she's, you know, crying and and acting the way that she is. Like it, I, my heart goes out to her uh, for the things that she's gone through and the things that have really caused her to cry and be emotional and, you know, tap into, into those feelings. So I, I feel I feel for her in that regard, like me too, sunshine, me too. And I like that that's hit upon, and especially in regards to Lena's career, is that she can't really showcase uh, too much feeling in her job because when she does, then people may not hire her because they think that she's just going to like flip out or act hysterical. Now, um, a couple of things that I wasn't the fondest of in this book, uh, as said in the beginning, when I first read this book, I thought it was an enemies to lovers, like really classical enemies to lovers where both parties didn't like each other and then become lovers later on. And admittedly, I, I'm a big fan of when that kind of dislike for the other person um, does turn into a grudging respect, but then those feelings kind of blow up into this big moment of, oh yeah, I do find you attractive. And it's in that moment that the two characters get together. I didn't really feel that in this book. Now, the second thing that I didn't really like about this book, or rather I wasn't as fond of with this book, is the ending in regards to Andrew. I kind of wished for a more fulfilled ending for Andrew, and not for Andrew, but with Andrew as a character. So throughout this book, Andrew and Max are in competition with one another. And then, you know, there's the history of Lena and Andrew and their almost wedding. And granted, Lena puts out that she and Andrew already have closure, or at least she has closure with Andrew. But I, you know, when you don't get to see the closure in a romance book, it's like it didn't happen. And that's kind of what I felt with Andrew, as I wish that there was a scene or something a little bit deeper that kind of showcased the closure between Lena and Andrew and a little bit better or at least um, more thorough closure in regards to Max and Andrew. I don't know if it's because there's going to be more plot lines with Andrew down later in books. I do know that there's a second book coming out in this series um, that features Max's best friend. So I don't really know if we're going to get more of Andrew later on. I kind of hope we don't. I don't really like him as a character. But those are those are my two little complaints and they're they're they are pretty tiny. Overall, I liked this book. I found it very enjoyable to read. I did like the dynamics between Lena and Max and also the family dynamics and drama that they have to kind of navigate through. I will be reading more of Mia Sosa's works. So I can't wait for the second book to come out. If you have read this book and you have thoughts on it, please comment down below and tell me what your thoughts are. Thank you so much for watching. As always and forever, may get lost in a book.